All right, so I have my huge sheet of Arches watercolor paper here. This one is 140LB and it is cold press watercolor paper. Now don't worry if you don't have a watercolor sheet as huge as this one. You can create your watercolor sketchbook from the normal watercolor pad as well. The only difference is that you will need to cut and stick a few more pieces together to make it a 10 page journal. Because we are documenting our 10 day travel, so you will need 10 different pages to paint all of them. So if you're using a watercolor pad, you will have to cut and stick number of pieces together. That's the only difference, but that's doable. If you don't want to stick a lot of paper together, there is another thing you can do. If you're using 100% cotton watercolor paper, actually both the sides work. You can use both the sides for your watercolor paintings. With Canton and Arches, I kind of use both the sides of my paper. So you can just create an accordion sketchbook of five pages and you can paint five of them on the front side and the other five paintings on the back side of that paper. So that is one thing you can do if you don't want to stick a lot of paper together to make it a 10 page journal. Okay, so let's cut the paper. I have my ruler and a pencil here. So as I mentioned earlier, the size I'm going to go with is a square of roughly 15 centimeter. It won't be exactly 15 centimeter as I'm hand tearing the paper. It will be slightly on and off here and there. I'm marking 16 centimeter so that when I hand tear, even if there is some error, it will be okay. I'm marking the 16 centimeter on the lengthy side of my paper. This paper is almost 80 centimeter long. That means I will get five pages from this side. 15 multiplied by five is 75. So I'll have a little extra, which I can use for sticking up the paper with the second piece. So I'm marking 16 there. I will mark another 16, another one here. Now I'll join all those points and I will cut that piece. So you can see that lengthy piece I have over the bottom. I'll be cutting that up and I will fold that into five equal divisions. Similarly, I will need one more piece to make it a 10 page journal. Now you can see the kind of edges I have for this paper. It has got a beautiful deckled edge. I'm going to recreate the same by tearing the paper by my hand. I'm not going to use a scissor. So if you want a clean border, you can use a paper cutter or a scissor. I'm just tearing off the paper using my hand. I already have a guideline there. Now let me tear that up. I hope I won't make any mistake here because it's an expensive watercolor paper and I don't want to spoil my paper for some silly mistake. Let's see how it goes. It isn't as bad as I thought it would be. As I'm hand tearing the paper, the size won't be perfect. It will have an irregular border and it will be slightly on and off here and there. So this is how I want my sketchbook to be. But if you prefer having a clean line, you can use a paper cutter or scissors and cut your paper to get a clean border. So that's the first piece. From this, I will get five pages. In a similar way, I'm going to tear another piece and I will be sticking these two pieces together to make it a 10 page journal. If you're using a watercolor pad, it's going to be the same process, but instead of five pages, you may be only getting two or three pages. You may have to stick more pieces together to make it a 10 page journal. That's the only difference. Okay, so in a similar way, I'm going to tear up another piece. First, I will mark a 15 centimeter line and I will follow that line and tear up the paper using my hand. So as I said earlier, I'm going to go with the 15 centimeter square size for my sketchbook. You can decide on the size that you want for your sketchbook. It can be a 10 by 10 square or a 20 by 20 square or you can go with a portrait or a landscape orientation. All those things are totally up to you. Now let me tear this up. Alright, so the second piece is also ready. You can see I have two longer sheet of paper here. This one is roughly 80 centimeter. And as I said earlier, I'll be getting five pages from each of these. So altogether, I'll be getting 10 sheets. I mean 10 pages or 10 sides. Our next task is to divide the paper into five equal divisions. So I'm gonna mark a 15 centimeter measurement. So that's the first mark. 
I'm gonna mark the second one. Now I'm gonna mark the third one. I'll get two more sides from the same sheet as it is quite long. So I'm marking the fourth one. And there it is. And we have a last piece, which is a bit more than 15 centimeter. Now I'm gonna add a line along that 15 centimeter measurement. So that's gonna be my first page of the sketchbook. In a similar way, I'll be adding another four lines so that I have five different divisions. After we have marked all the five sides, we'll be folding our paper along these lines we have added here. So I have added the second line. Now I'm gonna add the third line along the 15 centimeter mark. And now I'm gonna add the last line, which will give me the fourth and the fifth side. All right, so there we have it. We have divided the sheet into five equal divisions. The last section is slightly more than 15 centimeter. I think it is 16. So I have one centimeter thickness to create that flap, which is what I'll be connecting to the other sheet to make it a longer sketchbook. Now I'm just folding my paper along these lines I have added here. I'm just using my hands. The paper I'm using here is Arches 140 LB cold press watercolor paper and it is quite thick so it is a bit difficult to fold the paper it isn't that easy as that normal paper we did in the exercise section now i'm going to take out my ruler and i'm going to run my ruler along that fold i have added here to make it a smooth line so apply some pressure and run your ruler on top of that line if you have a bone folder you could use that i don't have one all i have is a ruler so i'm just using this one now I'm going to go with the second fold. I'm folding my paper along that second line I have added and I'm going to repeat the same exercise. Fold it and then run your ruler on top of it to make it a smooth line. And repeat the same exercise until you reach the end of your paper. So you may have three or four or five sheets according to the length of the paper. Okay, so let me quickly finish this. I have done two folds. I have two more left. You can see the way I'm running my ruler. So after you have marked the size of your paper, whether it's 10 centimeter or 15 centimeter or 20 centimeter, fold it and run your ruler on top of it to make it more smooth. All right, so the first five pages of my sketchbook is here. You can see that accordion folds I have created. So depending on the number of pages you want in your sketchbook, you can keep doing the same and attach them together to make it a longer sketchbook. So this is how it is looking. Making these equally sized pages is the major task of creating an accordion sketchbook. The rest is quite easy. Now I'll be creating a similar stack of pages. Maybe we can do that after we create the book cover. So let's do the book cover and we'll come back to this. So I'll be again folding the other piece and I'll create a flap along this line and I'll be sticking that to the other stack of paper. Okay, so let's create the book cover and we'll come back to this later. So here's my store-bought accordion sketchbook. You can see those neat pages nicely stacked together. It has got a hard cover. We're also going to create a hard cover just like this for our sketchbook and that is the next step. So to make it into a book format, you will just need to stick the first page and the last page onto a cardboard, which is again a really easy task. There is no stitching or binding involved. You just need to find a piece of cardboard, which is of a similar size of your sketchbook. When you have a hard cover for your sketchbook, it will become a little more safe and secure. And also you can carry around it in your art bag. If you don't want to add a hard cover, you can simply use the paper like this without having a cover. But it isn't a great idea to carry around a stack of paper like this. It might get dirty, so it's a good idea to add a hard cover. So to create my hard cover, I'm using my empty Arches paper pad. 
it has got a nice backing board which is of medium thickness and the size is kind of perfect for my sketchbook I can easily create two pieces of cardboard one for the front and one for the back okay so I'm placing my stack of paper and I'm adding some reference line that's the first line and I'm adding another line on the top so that's gonna be the size of my book cover I'll need one more piece like this for the other side so what will be the size you have chosen for your paper cut out two pieces of cardboard in a similar size one is for your front cover and other one is for your back cover so you will need two equally sized pieces of cardboard you can use any kind of cardboard it doesn't necessarily need to be a clean one the one I'm using here is white and clean just because it is of a paper pad if you're using a shoe box or if you're using some other packaging material there might be some stain or some sticker on it that's absolutely okay as we'll be using a decorative cover on top of it so what is inside doesn't really matter maybe you can use two entirely different cardboard for the front and the back that also doesn't really matter so here is a shoe box I kept this aside to create a bigger sketchbook and maybe the sides I will use for another sketchbook anyway I'm keeping this aside I have the habit of collecting nice boxes so I might be using this box to create another sketchbook in the coming months or it might end up in the trash let's see how it goes all right now let's create our sketchbook cover I already have my cardboard here now we need to add a cover for our sketchbook an outer covering just like the green one here it can be a decorative paper or it can be a book cloth you will find a lot of book binding materials in the craft store there is something called book cloth which is very easy to cut and stick so I have two decorative paper here one is this beautiful brushes and I have another one I might go with the second one if you like you can use newspaper as well that will also look classy okay so first let me cut the cardboard I already have marked those lines here I'm using a scissor and I'm following those lines and I'm cutting those two pieces of cardboard which is going to be the front cover and the back cover Okay, so here I have my first piece. In a similar way, I'm going to cut the other one. Alright, so we have two pieces of cardboard and our stack of paper here. We'll need to create one more similar stack to make it a 10 page journal. For now, let's finish the task for our sketchbook cover. And we can create the second stack when we finish the sketchbook cover. I hope you all have chosen the cover for your sketchbook. The first step is to cut out a piece of paper or fabric, which is slightly bigger than the size of that cardboard because we need to envelop these cardboard so it has to be slightly bigger than these maybe like a one centimeter or a two centimeter bigger than the size of your cardboard so first let's cut out that I really love the design of the sketchbook cover if you're visiting any craft store you will find plenty of beautiful designs sticking paper is very much easier than sticking fabric onto your cardboard so I would suggest you to go with any decorative paper or you can simply use a thicker paper. You will find different colors of cardstocks which also works perfect for your book cover. Okay, so I have just placed those two cardboards on my paper. Now I'm going to cut it over here. 
which gives me enough room for enveloping that cardboard. All right, so that is my sketchbook cover. I'll keep the bigger piece aside and I will use that in the future. Now I'm going to fold this into two equal pieces and I will cut that right at the center. So I have two pieces here, one for the front cover and the other one for the back cover. So when you place your cardboard right at the center of this piece, you should have enough room on the four sides so that you can envelop that piece of cardboard. I'm not sure which is the right side of this paper. Both the sides look the same. Anyway, whenever you're cutting your decorative paper or fabric, it has to be slightly bigger than the piece of cardboard. You can clearly see that here. I have like a two centimeter extra on all the four sides. We're gonna wrap up this piece of cardboard using this decorative paper. See that? So you will have to nicely cover your piece of cardboard, bring those flaps inside and we'll need to stick this properly. Okay, so when you're cutting your decorative paper or fabric, just keep that in mind. You should have enough of space on all the four sides to wrap it like this. Okay, now I'm gonna grab my glue and I'm applying this white glue on this piece of cardboard. Just randomly applying this glue squeeze it squeeze it and apply glue everywhere you can use any kind of glue which works perfectly on a cardboard and a paper okay so i have applied glue now i'm going to flip this and i'm going to attach that onto this paper apply some pressure and make sure it is nicely fixed onto that paper now take out a scissor and cut these corners. We we'll need to get rid of these corners to properly stick it. So you will get a rectangular or a square piece on all the four sides. Just cut that out. We don't need them. Okay, so cut all those four corners. We have one more left over here. Just cut it. Now take out your glue and apply glue onto all these four sides. You have these four flaps on all the four sides. Apply glue onto that. That's the first side. Now I'm applying glue on the second side. In a similar way, apply glue on all the four sides. We need to repeat the same process to create the back cover as well. The first step is to identify the design for your book cover. You can go with the fabric or you can go with the decorative paper. You'll find plenty of craft paper. So choose any of them or you can go with a thicker paper. Okay, so cut a slightly bigger piece than your cardboard, leaving some extra space on all the four sides. Then cut out those corners and apply some glue and fix that onto the cardboard just like the way i'm doing it here apply some pressure and secure it properly do it carefully now onto the fourth side i'm applying some pressure and i'm properly sticking that onto the cardboard and here's my front cover so this is how you create your book cover. So no matter whether you're using fabric or paper for your book cover, you will need to follow the same step. Maybe the glue might change. You may have to use a heavy duty, much more stronger glue if you're using a fabric cover. All right, so this is how you create your book cover. You can see how beautiful it is looking. Now in a similar way, I'm going to create the back cover.
Okay, so I have folded all the four sides. Now I'm gonna cut these corners. The same way how we did the previous one. Cut all the four corners. I hope you guys were able to follow the process so far. It isn't that difficult, right? You just need to fold your paper into desired size. Then you need to take out two pieces of cardboard, one for the front cover and the one for the back cover. Then to make our sketchbook more attractive, we are wrapping that with a decorative paper. So that is what I'm doing right now. I have removed those corners. Now I'm applying glue on all the four flaps and I will nicely stick that onto the cardboard to secure it. Okay, so let me quickly finish that off. All right, so I have created the front cover and the back cover of my sketchbook. Both of them has to be in the same size. Now it's time to combine the paper and the cover and make that into a complete sketchbook. So we have already folded our paper. Here is what we had created earlier. So this one has five individual sheets. We are gonna go with a 10 page journal. So I will have to create a similar piece with another 10 different pages. And then we'll stick both of them together to make it a continuous journal. So let me take out another piece of paper and I'm gonna fold that into five equal pieces. I mean five equal divisions, just like the one you have here. Now when you're creating your second set of paper, at the beginning of this paper, you will need to create a flap, just a small flap of one centimeter or 1.5 centimeter, not more than that. So let me create that first. Then the rest of the paper, I will divide that into five equal divisions. So I'm gonna get my ruler and a pencil. And first I will mark that little flap at the beginning of this paper. I have marked a width of 1.5 centimeter. Now I'm gonna fold it. You can run your ruler to make it smooth. Okay, so I have created a flap at the beginning of this paper. We'll be applying glue onto this flap and we'll be sticking that onto the other set of paper to make it a continuous journal. Okay, so let me quickly fold the remaining of the paper into five equal divisions, which is roughly 15 centimeter, as I'm gonna go with a 15 centimeter square for my paintings. So I'm measuring 15 centimeter and I will add a line along that 15 centimeter mark then I will fold the paper into five equal divisions. Okay, so you can go with any size that you prefer. It doesn't need to be 15 centimeters square. As I said earlier, you can go with a portrait orientation or a landscape orientation. You can go with any size that you prefer. All right, so let me quickly fold this into five equal divisions. I'm really liking this deckled edge of my paper, even though it is slightly on and off here and there. It has a more personalized look and I'm really loving it. So I have marked 15 centimeter and I have divided my paper into five equal divisions. Now I'm gonna fold it.
Okay, so the second set is also ready. The only difference is that for the second set we have created a flap and this is what we'll be sticking onto the other set to make it a continuous journal. So you can run your ruler multiple times to make it more compact. Now I'm going to take out my glue and I will just fix this flap onto the other set. It is quite thick as I have used a paper of 140 LB and also we have 10 sheets there. Okay, so let's fix this and start with our first painting. I'm really excited about this class. This is the first time I'm teaching something on a sketchbook and that too on a handmade sketchbook. So it is extra special to me. Now I'm going to apply glue onto the front side of this flap and we'll be sticking that onto the underside of the other paper. So apply glue onto that flap. And now keep that under the other set and fix it. Apply some pressure and make it really strong and firm. Okay, so if you fold it, you will get a continuous journal. It hasn't sticked properly, so let me run my roller. After you have applied the glue, maybe you can leave it aside for a few minutes. Let it set completely. It totally depends on the type of glue that I have used. For some glue, it may take a much longer time. So don't rush, keep it aside, let it set completely. Now I will just run my roller one last time before I stick these paper onto those hard covers. This will make my papers more compact. Okay, so here it is. If I open it, I have 10 different pages. The storeboard sketchbook looks more clean and compact. This is made out of a machine. The other one we are creating here is purely handmade. So it has its own beauty. Now let's add the covers and that's going to be the last step in creating our accordion sketchbook. So you just need to simply apply glue and fix the first page onto the front cover and the last page onto the back cover. And when you open up, you will have a long sheet of 10 individual sides. You can use it like a normal sketchbook. If you bring them together, it looks like a very normal sketchbook. And if you open up, you can see all of your paintings in one single frame. And that is the beauty of an accordion sketchbook. Okay, now I'm applying glue onto the first sheet. This is the front facing sheet. Okay. Now we're going to fix that onto the cardboard. In a similar way, we need to apply glue onto the back sheet as well. It's pretty simple. This is your front facing sheet. We are applying glue onto that. Now I'm keeping that carefully on that hard cover. Press it apply some pressure and fix it properly. So that's your front cover. Easy peasy, right? In a similar way, I'll be applying glue onto the last sheet and I will fix the other cover. And with that, you have your accordion sketchbook. Okay, so the front cover is ready. Now in a similar way, I'm gonna apply glue onto the last sheet, which is right at the end. And we'll just stick that onto the back cover. I know at least some of you are really scared of using sketchbooks. The main reason is that if you make a mistake, you feel like you have ruined the entire sketchbook. This is really common, even I have been there. Or I must say I'm still there. I still have that pressure inside me whenever I'm starting off with a new sketchbook. So I used to put a lot of effort in creating better paintings so that I won't ruin my sketchbook. Alright, so we have created a gorgeous choir sketchbook all by ourselves. It's a 100% handmade sketchbook. I really love these deckled edges and I really can't wait to start with the first painting. You can see how you can open up this sketchbook and view all your paintings in one single frame. So this is exactly like that musical instrument accordion and that is how it got its name, accordion sketchbook. 